Hello, hello, good morning, good morning world. And thank you all for uh, being available with us this morning on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. Uh, it is truly a pleasure. Um, I'm always thankful for my brothers being available uh, to chop it up every Saturday morning. Um, and so, yes, thank you all. Uh, however, today is April 30th, uh, 2022. And we have yet again seen an interesting week in the sports world, where, as example, we last night uh, got a chance to see the Chicago Bears uh, complete their draft. Um, and we'll have some things to say about that. Um, on the other hand, we saw Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons, and Steve Nash as Brooklyn Nets get swept by the Boston Celtics. Um, our Chicago Bulls get manhandled by the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks, uh, John Morant. And we, all, we want all the smoke Memphis Grizzlies uh, just show us how gritty they are. Or, as Ian has already stated, how the Minnesota Timberwolves showed us how choky they are. Um, as well as the Heat, Sixers, Suns, Mavericks, and Warriors close out their respective series. And so with that being said, introduce my brother from another mother, Mr. Jamar Goodman. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning, y'all. I'm doing pretty good. How's everybody? Pretty good, pretty good. Yes, Introduce him, my other brother, my other partner here uh, on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast. And he's a brother from another mother because we play football at Morgan Park High School. Appreciate your time and thank you for chopping it up with us. What's good with you, in? Same old, same old, man. How y'all feeling, man? Blessed to be here. Pretty good. Yes, sir. Oh. And so, fellas, uh, let's start first with the Chicago Bears. Um, in the NFL draft. And so, uh, Jamar, see you with your shirt, bro. Um, I'm rocking a little bit of mine as well. And so, just curious, man, like, Bears, they picked the corner for the second round. Uh, they went ahead then, and they picked the safety in the third round. Um, no, they picked them in the second round. They had two second rounds. Okay, that's right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, pick 38 and... Uh, Pick uh, 39 and pick 48. And so uh, with these, good morning, Deshaun, good morning, bro. And so with these picks, uh, Jamar, do you like these picks? Um, what do you think of them? Um, Honestly, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, so let me, let me be clear. The Bears have a lot of holes, a lot. A lot more than what the draft picks can probably, you know, a lot more holes than draft picks for us. That's just what it is. So, yeah, you know, we didn't get one of the premier wide receivers, but wide receiver apparently in this class is pretty deep. Um, we did get an offensive tackle, a little offensive lineman in general. But I guess once again, I mean, I guess that's, eh, it's, it's, it's okay. Um. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, you know, last season that Jalen Johnson was the only defensive back out there playing. That's a hole that has been, you know, an issue for about two years now. Like, how dare them try to replace Kyle, Kyle Fuller with Desmond Trufant, who can't stay on the field. Yeah. Like, so. They gave him. Man. But <laughs> I'm still upset that they even, like, cut fuller last year for cap casualties and kept Jimmy Graham who, who only played like five snaps last year. So, uh, no, I guess in all seriousness, um, no, they, they, they got a corner that, that fits the scheme and looks like he's pretty darn good. So I'm happy there. They got a defense. They got an, a safety who I believe like can help us out a lot, especially since, you know, Eddie Jackson can't tackle or can't play, so I I don't know. So, preach. I mean, yeah, uh, you know, Justin Fields probably needs a number one. Maybe maybe add some more old linemen in the future, but I mean, well, what's the point of having Justin Fields out there when the defense can't stop anybody? So the defense can get tired once again. So you you got to address, you know big issues and I feel like corner or well, defensive backs is probably the biggest issue the biggest glaring issue out of all of them in the past two years so right so I'm I'm actually I love it 
got into, you know, a little spat on Twitter about it. But at the end, you know, they, they realized that uh, Poles is cleaning up a mess that Pace has made. And I don't know, give Poles a chance to actually do his job. I mean, heck, he was a former lineman, so maybe he has something up his sleeve or evaluating things differently than, than they have in the past. So we'll see what happens. Okay. Yep. And your thoughts, bro. Um, I mean, Jamar pretty, pretty, uh, summed it up pretty good. Uh, we didn't, we didn't really get any big name guys coming out of the draft. Like we didn't get a typical one of the big name receivers, but I mean, surprisingly they all went, they all went early. What was it? Five receivers in the top 20. Yeah, so I received the top Some, 20. The one, yeah. the one receiver that went early that I thought the, that probably could have slid to the Bears was Jahan Dotson, but he went 16 to the commanders. I was I was really surprised. I mean, he's a he's a very good receiver out of Penn State, but I, I was very surprised about that. But you know, they got they addressed their needs. I mean, we're not gonna we're not just gonna build it, build this team up with a couple two three players or a couple big names so you know i get it i just been you know just been waiting to see how everything pans out during the season and you know how they put the roster together i am still concerned that we typically don't have a number one receiver but who knows you know the uh what's his name velish jones he could be a he could be a key contributor him and uh, Di- uh him and darnell Moody could be a dynamic duo so i mean we just gotta wait and you know play things out and typically Players from the second to the seventh round are normally the guys that make up your team and that contribute the most. And some of them become stars. Like we've seen Tom Brady go in the sixth round, and we've seen, you know, other Hall of Famers go in the second to you know seventh round. So, you know, we'll see. It's it's not going to be an overnight thing. We haven't got any sexy picks. We haven't picked up, you know, in free agency. So, you know, they're just getting players that fit their scheme, and you know, I'm just waiting back sitting. So. Like he said, they address needs, and that was pretty good. You know, they got a safety because, uh, I don't know, Eddie Jackson, to be honest, I think Eddie Jackson ain't focused. Ever since Eddie Jackson got that contract extension and got that little money, he ain't been right Man. since. He ain't, <laughs> yeah. he ain't been right since. So, um, I just don't think he focused. So, uh, them getting a the safety that early last night further lets me know that he don't do nothing this year. He might be on his way out of here. <laughs> so uh they got another corner that can probably get on the other side of Jalen Johnson. Hopefully Jalen he still transcends up and not down. Uh, um yeah, I mean it's gonna be real interesting to see how this how this defense plays and how they put the defense together. But um I'm I'm just sitting back waiting. I'm I'm not, you know, I'm not mad at the picks. They they got some needs, so it was pretty good. Right. Um and I think you guys could see it on my face. Um <laughs> yeah. So with the Bears, guys, um, geez, geez, geez. So don't get me wrong. I like the first pick, Jamar. I like this kid uh, out of Washington. If y'all don't know, Washington got some ballers and they, they are like becoming a farm system for corners. Yeah, Washington University, early. University of Washington. These guys are producing first rounders like 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 muffins, okay? And so I like that pick because I'm like, all right, yeah, this kid definitely, um, you know, come from Washington. He's coming from a great lineage of corners. Um, and so I like it, Jamar, because I think we all know on the podcast, this kid could be likely a day one starter opposite of Jalen Johnson. And he can be the immediate contributor on special teams, right, Jamar? Uh, yeah. run down, make some tackles. His 40 yard dash was a four five two, so he got some explosive speed there. Um, for me, on the other hand, I can see the point of Jaquan Brisker out of Penn State. Um, and maybe it's because of Eddie Jackson, uh, in, but I'm thinking maybe that Jashawn Gibson might not be the long term answer, and so they want to get somebody there, um, as insurance just in case Jashawn Gibson, who has been hurt, um, is not available, or Eddie Jackson. <laughs> and so, like, we are really not, let's say, balanced at that position. Um, but one thing I do find very interesting, fellas, is 
with Ryan Poles being a former lineman, with us wanting to secure our future with uh, Justin Fields and trying to protect him, I just was expecting the Bears to go at the offensive lineman, um, and they did not do that. Um, surprisingly enough, they did not even do that in the third round. Um, and so I know last year we got, uh, you know, offensive line help. And unfortunately, the kid got injured at USC. Um, so hopefully we'll have him back. But I still was expecting us to try to, um, you know, let's say go out the guard of somebody. Because if I recall, Jamar, we lost James Daniels this year, right? And so with us losing an offensive line, and I was hoping we would go after that position, not necessarily a safety. Um, but, you know, I can see you guys' point. Um, we are very, very uh, needy at a bunch of positions, and so it totally makes sense. Um, on the other hand, let's get to this uh, third round of y'all, and I'm excited about him, y'all. And the reason why I say that is, uh, and, and don't get me wrong, y'all, uh, this kid out of Penn State can play football, so expect a physical football player. Um, Village Jones Jr., wide receiver out of Tennessee. Um, he is a great athlete. Um, he's meaty, y'all. He's a kind of thick wide receiver. And I got a chance, y'all, to meet Darnell Mooney last night. And Ian, Darnell Mooney is about your size. <laughs> I know. <laughs> joking. His brother got to be no more than six feet, something like that. He probably like 180 wet. 170, 180. Skinny kid, not thick. I'm sitting there like, wow, this is our go-to receiver. Really? Seriously? <laughs> and so I was very, very happy when they made this pick. And I think people in the stadium was kind of like, <laughs> like, okay, we kind of get somebody that um can kind of be an Anquan Boldenish type. Um it was, uh, you know, you know, the two commentators, guys, I, I can't remember these guys' names, but they are often on um, Chicago Sportsnet. And they were there and they compared him to Debo. I'm like, wow. But they did, they compared this guy to Debo. They compared him to Anquan Bolden. Um, mm. and, and they stated that he could actually be very special on special teams. And so I'm like, all right. They state he can serve as a deep threat. He can start at the kick and punt returner. Um, he still got development, but he's a speedy, speedy deep threat. And he's not afraid of that contact. They say he liked that smoke. And so I'm like, all right, I like that type of player and this type of uh, weather in Chicago. Um, and hopefully uh, this kid can come in and he can contribute um, in a variety of different ways. And so um I'm, I'm a little upset, y'all, that we didn't address the offensive line. But, Jamar, and I see you guys' point, we got a lot of needs we need to address. It, it's way, way, way bigger than just the offensive line. And so, with that being said, kind of puts me at a perspective like, all right, you know, uh, we got a bunch of needs we need to address, so we just got to address them. And so, here we are, y'all. Um, on the other hand, just want to know, Jamar, um, out of, let's say, these various teams, y'all, that have made their draft picks, um, which team y'all think made a splash or had a good day one and day two uh, within the draft? That's easy. <laughs> I know where y'all uh, Go ahead, Jamar. Go uh, ahead. You want to go? Go ahead. Bro. Yeah, go ahead, Ian. Yeah, yeah, I'll go ahead. Uh, I think my number one team that had the biggest splash was the Jets. They got – um, typically they probably got the best point. Well, I don't know if he's the best point out the draft, but he's one of the best points out the draft, uh, South Gardner. Then they came back with the 10th pick and got Gary Wilson, who's arguably the best receiver out the draft. Um, and then they got a, probably a, probably their biggest deal was Jermaine Johnson, um, the DM from Florida State. So, um, that was three first round picks. I think they, uh, I think they drafted pretty well. And they got a running back in the second round, I believe, from um, Iowa State. He's pretty good. So they've been drafting pretty well. So uh, those guys can go over there and contribute. Um, there's no no excuses for Zach Wilson this year. <laughs> All right, interesting, man. Um, 
one thing I state um, and I see now um, is Iowa State is low-key becoming a factory for running backs, too. And yeah, so, um, yeah. They, they might got a good one out of Iowa State for sure, because I remember that kid. He, he could play. Yeah, so, he can run. Yeah. Jamar? Man. Yeah, I mean, dude, Jets, Jets definitely did their thing for sure. I, I was actually surprised they ended up with Sauce. I thought he would have went a little bit earlier than that, but um, I would say the Eagles, yep. not even, you know, courtesy yeah. of draft picks, but more so <laughs> trading for A.J. Brown. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I'm, that was big. I'm, I'm still in, in awe on that one. Um, I would say probably uh, the Baltimore Ravens. I would say the Ravens. But, okay, go ahead. And, yeah, I, I get the, you know, got rid of Hollywood Brown, and that was the the initial shock of the draft. Mm-hmm. Um, not sure exactly why yet for the Ravens side, but the reason why I say the Ravens are winners is because who they actually, you know, selected. The fact that they got Cal Hamilton, who dropped all the way to, what was it, pick 15, 16 today? Yeah, he dropped pretty, yeah, he dropped pretty low. And yeah. he was a uh, uh, top five talent in the draft. Yeah, Number one safety. Easy. For that to happen and then end up with David uh, Ajobo uh, and Travis Jones, like, I don't know. It's just something about the Ravens to where they they just find themselves in good position to make key picks that just turns out the pan that just, you know, they, the Ravens in general just make good picks, like almost like all the time. They they address needs. They they see things before it happens. I mean, Lamar Jackson. That I'm just going back to that because somehow he you know sail, sail all the way to, what, to, 30, to pick thirty two. Two, yep. And everybody was you know head scratching, and you got one quarterback drafted at number ten talking about the other teams made nine mistakes, and yet he's out the league in the same <laughs> draft. <laughs> so, Mr. Rosen. <laughs> yeah, scrub. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think the Ravens did well. Um, as far as Hollywood Brown, I, I mean, I guess for him, he I think he might be overall in a better situation since he's playing in the same system in college, got his college quarterback, so he might actually be productive in Arizona. Oh, uh, new, new news on uh, Hollywood Brown. So I watched a video um, yeah. right before we got on. He actually been asking for a trade uh, over four mm-hmm. years now. He asked for a trade, doesn't like the offense. Um, he says he stated him and Lamar talked about this a couple times. So I was kind of shocked about that. So, I mean, I guess they just got the deal together finally. Like you said, he gets to go over and play with college, college teammates. So, yeah, but he's been – he asked for a trade. This wasn't a, some so, thing they just did. He, he'd been asked for a trade because of the offense. That makes sense. <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense now because them being in that scheme is like – not being utilized to his fullest potential. So, I mean, that makes sense now. So, yep. Yeah, yeah. And y'all literally heading where I was headed. Um, I'm giving the Cardinals an A, y'all. And a lot of that comes because of them getting Hollywood Brown. Think about it, y'all. This team is a pretty good football team last year. Like, yeah. you know, uh, but we got to also think about it, uh, fellas. They are in the same division with the L.A. Rams. And so this division is competitive. Um, you got the Niners. Uh, unfortunately, we might see Debo leave San Francisco, but we've been seeing articles right now. They don't seem like they're making any talks right now, really. Um, I, hey, um, hey, real quick I, on that. <laughs> so apparently Debo uh, yesterday was caught wearing a shirt saying Debo is back. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> wow. Really? Okay. Yeah. So, oh, oh, damn. Okay, so... Odell said he knows the T about the Debo situation. He was saying, should he spill it? So maybe, Whoa. I don't know. Maybe that was it. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah, y'all. Maybe we got to get OBJ on the early morning sports talk. Oh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> up, bro. <laughs> and so, yeah, man, like, yeah, this guy get to go back with his college teammate. I mean, think about it, y'all. Like, this team was a very good football team for majority of the year only went downhill because of Kyler Murray's injury. So you got Marquise Brown now with the weapons you already got. And so now I'm getting y'all excited about the NFC West again. 
because if you got Hollywood Brown with these weapons already in Arizona and you got the Rams and you got San Francisco, um, it's like it's like a football league that's going to be very, very talented um, with certain teams and just certain teams just not going to be there, but it's going to be very top heavy. And so, um, yeah, the Cardinals, um, their offense, y'all, um, their offense Sports. is looking pretty, pretty good. Um, on the other hand, they got a tight end, y'all, out of Colorado State. I remember watching this dude. I remember watching catches on him late night. He came out of Colorado Ball. State. This dude is a baller. Um, this kid, Jamar, can play so many. He, he, he's, like, versatile. He kind of reminds me of, like, the guy to um, uh, Las Vegas, um, the, the tight end. Yeah, like, yeah, he's, like, one of those. He's, like, uh, <laughs> a complete package. Um, and so I believe he will contribute immediately. Um, and so I'm looking for that. But on the other hand, uh, the Cardinals, um, we know what happened with their defensive end situation. And so they addressed that twice. They addressed that twice. And so um, I'm looking at them and I'm like, all right, they really, really are trying to address this position. And so um, I like where the Cardinals are headed mainly because of the fact that they got Marquise Brown, but they addressed a few needs that were very obvious if you watched this team last year, very obvious. And so um, I'm, I'm excited to see where this team goes and just see how they compare with um, the Rams and the uh, Niners if Debo stays there. So, yeah, I, I like the Cardinals, fellas. I really, really do. That was they, – they, they've been all right. On the other hand, I'd like to send a special shout-out to my Green Bay Packers fans who, on the <laughs> other hand – um, who, on the other hand, um, in their first round, Jamar, um, once again, went defense. And so, Anthony Walsh, we want to thank you, my friend, for posting on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast page a picture of Aaron Rodgers in distress, which makes everybody day when you post that picture. On the other hand, we want to thank you for reminding us that Green Bay just continues to be Green Bay. And, um, you know, might do good in the regular season when playoffs come. Yeah. Down the drain. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yep. All righty, fellas. Um, that, if you guys do not mind, concludes our NFL draft talk. Unless you guys got any further thoughts about the draft or football in general. Um. Yeah, just – couple quick things um definitely surprised that Malik Willis <laughs> fell all the way to 86 to Tennessee wow yeah. this is the quarterback out of uh, Liberty yep yep who wow. is odds on favor to be the first quarterback off the board mm -hmm. and to see the Steelers taking the hometown kid pick it instead of Willis and then Willis dropping that far yeah that, I don't know that was surprising and then I remember Atlanta trading up early in the second round. I think he was going to go there. She get death not redder. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, kind of surprising on that one. And then I feel like the Vikings GM is uh, definitely new to this. For for all these trade backs and trading within the division and not even getting adequate compensation, it, like some some lady on the radio. Um, was calling it amateur hours, so just just throwing that out. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. They already got yeah, empty calories there. <laughs> they already Man. got empty calories there. Already missing field goals in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> now you Man. know what? As a Bears fan, I totally do not mind amateur hours with Minnesota. You keep being an amateur up there in Minnesota because we could totally, <laughs> we could totally <laughs> benefit from it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on the other hand, we hope Detroit uh, keeps being Detroit. Um, and so, yeah. They got some pretty uh, good two picks too. They had some nice picks, didn't yeah. they? But yeah. it's the thing, y'all, with the Lions. It's like, geez, like. It's just the co I think it's just the culture. It's like, it's no matter who they get, <laughs> they got the most talented team and they just still going to find a way to. He's a Detroit Lion. It's toxic. <laughs> Organization, man. What can I say? But, you know, they got Aiden Hutchinson, y'all. And yeah. uh, hopefully that kid can come around and he can change some things within that culture. We will see. Um, yeah, and shout out to Georgia, y'all. Um, they got some grown men. 
and those grown men got drafted. Um, Georgia uh, was all over the board. Of course, the SEC is all over the board, but Georgia definitely was all over the board. Those guys from the defensive side of the ball, um, so they got picked. Um, shout out to Ohio State and um, and their wide receivers. Uh, we were just called watching this team last year and us talking about them, right? Like, man, they are explosive on offense, explosive. And so they they got guys off the boards, and they gonna got they gonna have more coming off the boards because oh uh, yeah they are. Not, they got some other ones, man. That's um developing like Marvin Harrison Jr. and stuff. And so like these guys can play, and so yeah, we will uh definitely be looking forward to Ohio State on a college football scene. Uh, but you know they're producing a lot of NFL talent as well. And so yes. All right, fellas, uh, let's get into the NBA playoffs. Uh, we uh, have now concluded our first round series, y'all. And so uh, let's talk about our Chicago Bulls. Um, they got eliminated by the Milwaukee Bucks, as Jamar predicted, in a gentleman's sweep. Um, the Bulls are surely, uh, they got dominated, y'all, in every facet of this series. Um, luckily, they squeaked by in game two. Um, so just curious, guys, on your thoughts from this series. And are there any positives the Bulls can take going into next season? And what steps, if you guys are the GM, would you take to make the team better? And so, Jamar, let's begin with you, bro. All right. So, you know, thoughts on the series. I feel like the first two games, like, you know, the first half of the Bulls season, like that type of team showed up. They actually, you know, played hard and, you know, didn't let, didn't let, uh, they let go of the pedal. They definitely, you can see they were outmatched overall in the series, talent wise and scheme wise and everything else. But, you know, they, they fought um, and had a lot of pride in those first two games and actually snuck away with the second one. The first one, it seemed like Milwaukee was gift wrapping it to them. They just couldn't take it. But outside of that, it went downhill quickly. Um, you know, I'll say this at least we didn't get swept. At least we didn't have, you know, the, arguably the best <laughs> player in the world on our team that got swept. Uh, at least we ain't got, you know, a guy that, you know, doesn't want to play games on our team and just watches it getting swept. Um, I'm just, you know, just throwing that out there. We we, right. we actually <laughs> won a game against the defending champs. Yeah, Mark, can you give me two seconds, bro? And I'm going to let you finish. Um, just quickly, Prescott JB, good morning, bro. He stated the Bears offense is going to look like a failed abortion this year. Oh, Wow. <laughs> that's pretty harsh man this guy jb we love you man we love when you come on here and say this outlandish stuff <laughs> and press guy jb and jamar they jamar always has world-class reactions to press guy jb this has been since day one these guys are our <laughs> buddies and so like press guy jb always comes with some very unique perspectives and you know what man uh, Prescott JB, man, if Darnell Mooney don't develop, you right, man. They, it's going to like a damn, it's going to like an atrocity, man. And so we hoping that don't happen, though, because um, we hoping that the Packers offense look like a failed abortion this year. And so that'll be great if that is indeed the scenario. On the other hand, uh, Victor Young has nothing to do with his life. And so he comes on this morning on the Early Morning Sports Talk podcast, <laughs> uh, spreading badness all over the pace. And so he states um, in his good morning to us, they will still beat the Bears <laughs> out for the division. And so I'm assuming he's talking about either the Packers or the Vikings because it damn sure won't be the Lions. Maybe the Lions will. Well, who knows? But on the other hand, um, I'm assuming he's talking about one of those two teams. Uh, but remember, Victor, uh, we, we, we kind of own Minnesota with Mr. Empty Calories. Um, our, our competition has always been Green Bay. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, he stayed at the Packers, and he said, listen, I'm just saying this happens every year, and then inevitably kicks in. And so, yeah, Victor has nothing to do with his morning. Um, I'm going to so take, just- take the high road here. You know, con- congrats <laughs> to the Colts on winning the AFC uh, South in uh, this upcoming season. Congrats. Because they, they won that division by default now. Congrats. Really? Because, I mean, what's really going on in the AFC South right now? What? We got the Jaguars. Uh, what, what, what else we got? The, the, the Texans. Texans. And the A.J. Brownless uh, Tennessee Titans. There you go. They just ain't want to pay A.J. Brown. That's crazy. 
AJ Brown go Julio. I mean, he kind of washed up a little bit. And so, yeah. Um, Victor, yeah, man, you, you literally might be winning the division this year, finally. And so uh, hopefully you guys won't choke, though, because you choked last year. It was really, really bad. Like, you guys were supposed to go to the playoffs and you choked really bad. And so um, hopefully that doesn't happen this year, man. Okay? Um, so hopefully you guys don't choke, all right? Um, yeah. So on the other hand, he stated, I don't strong arm, LOL, it's not a lock. And so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what Victor means on that. But, um, yeah, regardless of the fact, man, um, we, we appreciate you chopping it up with us. And, um, yeah, man, good luck to your coast, man. Uh, Jamar stated that you guys won the AFC South by default. That's on paper, though. That's on paper. And so, um, hopefully, uh, Ryan Tyner Hill don't choke the division like he did the um, – AFC divisional playoff game last year, which is terrible. Mm. Well, Malik Willis don't have your job. You keep messing around. <laughs> I'm telling you because you know he he gonna come in with a chip on his shoulder too. Like really, like really, y'all put me at 86, 86 when I was like all on the pre-drive boards everywhere. Like people like expecting me to be a first rounder, and I dropped to 86. If I'm Tennessee, man, I'm kind of happy. Like, like, yeah, you know, like y'all completely dismissed this kid. Like, you know, so he stated, I don't know. We got a lateral move from Wentz to Ryan Choke Artist. And so we'll see, man. Um, you got us, you got a, a decent quarterback. He's, you know, y'all love them washed up quarterbacks in uh, Indianapolis. So uh, maybe, <laughs> um, you know, Maybe man, he'll he'll come out of his washing up, man. He'll come out and he'll just be refreshed again for some reason. Um, he'll probably go for four thousand yards this year, probably. He playing in the dome. Um, he got some yeah. weapons. Yeah. Um, he, he got a great Running back. Game. Yeah. So gotta take pressure off of him. Um, he got a defense with a great uh coach of um creating turnovers and different things. So we'll see, man, how they do. Um, might be a sleeper team. It might be a sleeper. They might, they might. And so, yeah. Um, on the other hand, Jamar, um, I'm sorry, my brother, uh, but you were talking about our Chicago Bulls. And so I need you to play GM, bro. Uh, what would you do to make this team better? What positives can you take going into next season? And just what's your thoughts on this series? All right. So, so all in all, I mean, you know, it just, it's a breath of fresh air to know that, you know, Chicago basketball is relevant again. Actually, you know, the fact that we play more than 82 games this year and going forward, you know, that's what the expectation is. Um, so first things first, uh, Zach Levine, that contract, that situation. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like you got to pay him because here's the deal. Um, there's guys that's out. Go ahead. So there's guys out here that's, you know, getting max contracts and is nowhere near the caliber player of Zach Levine. So the market says you have to pay him. And in the event that you don't pay him, well, we're going to sign and trade him for, for parts that's not equal value? So that's what's going to happen. You're going to end up getting – there's a rumor that the Bears – I mean, not the Bears. The Bulls would uh, sign and trade him to, to Dallas for uh, Powell – Finney Smith and somebody else, like, what, what, what are we supposed to do with that? Mm -hmm. so, so that's what I'm saying. Like, you're not going to get equal value. When's the last time you, you've seen equal value in the NBA trade with a star player? Never. So, and he's proved that he can be second fiddle to DeRozan and still don't miss a beat with his numbers. He can still be productive. So I feel like you have to pay him. Second, you need to address the interior presence of your team Vooch you, you've been nice you actually played a little bit better than I thought you did in this series you you didn't let those tall trees you know really bother you as much as I thought but at the end of the day you 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 can't you can't cover you can't cover a bit um you can't protect the rim um we I feel like his days are numbered 
and we're probably looking at a a go bear, uh, an Aiton, uh, somebody with with some some rim protection presence, somebody that can crash the boards at a high level, somebody that can impact uh, and alter opposing shots at the rim, someone that can make an impact outside the the numbers on the stat sheet. Because yeah, he can score, but we have other guys that can score. And his scoring, what the other guy scoring doesn't really move the needle. What moves the needle is somebody that can actually play defense at the rim. So that's what I would do. And I'm pretty sure that's what Mark Everly and um, AK are probably looking at too. They, they've identified what needs to be done and they have, you know, uh, done things to actually address it and not put a Band-Aid on it. So... That's right. Um, just being 100, though, in and uh, Jamar, um, I felt like the Bulls quit, y'all. I felt like they quit. I really do. I felt like they quit after game three. Like they knew they were going to lose this damn series. They knew it. And no interior presence at all. I mean, like literally in games four and five, fellas, man, Ansika Kumpo just, he had his way legitimately, like with the Bulls. Like, they're the outside shooters, you know, they marked up on Kumpo and his shooters were just, they were shooting. They were shooting on all levels, man. And so the Bulls, um, don't get me wrong, we got some positives that we can go on, but the Bulls quit this series. I felt like they could have fought a lot harder. And the reason why I say that, fellas, is by looking at the score. They got blew out. Like, games, and this was without Chris Middleton, okay? Like, with the Bulls, without Chris Middleton, I'm like, all right, we got a chance, all right? We, we, you know, got a decent chance. But at the same time, we were very banged up. We did not have Alex Caruso. We lost him. Um, Zach Levine was out game five. Um, and so we were definitely down. Um, Lonzo Ball, of course, and we know how great of a defender he is, low-key. Um, and so part of it is when I say the positive, fellas, my positive going into next is what Ian or and Jamar been saying all year is we need a healthy roster. And so with the healthy roster, hopefully, um, and a big that can defend down low, that would help us become the team we think and know that we can become. And so that's just where I'm at with the Bulls. I just felt like they knew they didn't have a chance. But Ian, go ahead, bro. Um, a couple things with the Bulls. So number one, injuries I mean I think they talked about it on TNT I mean before early in the season we were the, we were number one in the east I mean we were playing pretty fucking great and then uh what after the after the all-star break we I don't think we I don't even think we went 500 so we dropped all the way from one to six and you know that's with injuries multiple people out uh what Levine was out of uh, for a minute here uh even Demar caught COVID or something at one point uh and then we lost Lonzo for the season Patrick Williams before the season even started and then he came back later um he's a positive for sure yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we lost Lonzo for the rest of the year so it's just it's been injuries after injuries after injuries it it just this is the story of the season. Like even the last game, like you just stated, we didn't have uh we didn't have Levine. Caruso got hurt, you know. So it that's just been the story of the season. I mean, and that's pretty damn good for us to be first and we end up six and still make the playoffs. So I mean, we're not that bad of a team. Um, so I like I was telling uh like I was telling Terrence the other day. I would like for us to run it back to I would like for us to run it back with the same team but healthy. As long as we can stay healthy with Lonzo, Caruso, DeMar, even Levine, um, I would like for them to run it back and see how we, you know, how we play healthy and, you know, with more experience. Um, we do need to work on uh, low post presence. Um, so here's the thing with Vooch. Uh, he, like, like Jamar stated, he played, he played aggressive during this, yeah, during this series. Yeah, more aggressive than he's ever that I've ever seen him. So I was like he knew we was talking about him, like he knew it. Yeah. So I wasn't typically I wasn't typically mad at Bush. He didn't shoot well. 
But um, he played typically more aggressive than he's normally played. So I wasn't mad at that. If they don't trade Vooch or move him, I would like for them to get another big man that could contribute off the bench. Like, and Tristan Thompson is cool, like defensive wise for just a big body to take up some space, but they need somebody to kind of score too. Like, I wouldn't even be mad if they got a guy like, even though I know they're not going to get him, but like, like a guy like Demarcus Cousins. Like the other night we played the Warriors. Um, he came in and gave him what 16 or 18 off the bench. Like that would help us a lot. A lot. That's facts, bro. Cause our backup bro, big bro. man, they don't do nothing. Yeah. So that, when I, mean, I that say works. nothing, Jamar, they don't do <laughs> nothing. I'm like, man, they suck. Like, how are they in the <laughs> NBA? Like, for real. Like, who is this number yeah. seven uh guy? Number seven, he just sucks. And yeah. then the backup center <laughs> behind Vooch, he sucks even worse. Like, I'm like, yeah, seriously, so. like, really, seriously, like, they get in the game and the team's just going ham when they go, like, right, it's time to eat, let's just eat, like. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, we just got to, we just got to step up a low post presence. Um, Another thing that I'm concerned about, well, two more things I'm concerned about, Uh, Billy Donovan's offense, I'm not a big fan of his uh, pick and roll offense with the Bulls. The Bulls offense is pretty much predictable, is... Levine get the ball, bring the ball down, or I guess this was just without Lonzo. I guess when when we're not running, I don't right. like the offense. It's a uh, the uh, Demar get the ball, or Levine get the ball. They come the big man, come set a pick. Everybody else get the fuck out of the way, and we are gonna play one on one ball. Like that's right. not that's not gonna get us far in the playoffs as we've seen. Uh, and then. That leaves us open for people to they're gonna blitz, they ain't gonna do nothing but blitz double team tomorrow, blitz tomorrow, get the ball out of his hand for Levine, whoever get whoever has the high hand. So that's not gonna work. So I don't know what Billy Donovan got to do, but that ain't gonna work. Cause then we'll be number one in the east, number two, number three, and we're gonna get we gonna get bounced in the first round again. So that ain't gonna work. Mm. Um Levine. So that's, they, that's why I was going. You're taking the words out of my mouth, Levine, because. Yeah, so Levine, would I pay Levine $200 million? I don't know. That's a tough one because I don't, I don't know. That's a tough one. I mean, $200 million. I don't, I, don't, I don't think, I don't, to be honest, me personally, I don't think he's worth $200 million, but but I want him to stay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course. But, um. Cause he's, I mean, he's younger than Demar. But Demar Derozan is what thirty two. He's like around our age, thirty two. So, I mean, I would keep him, but would I pay him two hundred million? I don't know. I I don't know. I don't think he's worth two hundred million, but he has a ceiling. Like he kind of, I don't know if you know us having Demar kind of. I don't know. He kind of got kind of weird at the end of the season. He, I don't know. Um. I don't want to trade. I don't want to trade him. I don't want to lose him, but I don't want us to trade him like Jamar said. I don't know want us to trade him for somebody that's not even close to worth his talent. So then we'll take. Then we'll take a step back. You know. So I will hope or, they keep. Or, him. Man, 200 I mean, million, two hundred million. That's that's Devin Booker or uh, Jokic. That um, he ain't like that yet. Yeah, he's not there yet. He could be. I'm not saying that he could. He could be, but 200 million for Levine. Oof. It's, that's it's like he, he's he's not far off in regards yeah. to to Talent impact. Yeah. yeah, he he's not. But it's like uh, it, it's more so like pick your poison. So either you you keep the guy and figure it out because you're talented enough still to be relevant. Or you lose them, trade them for role players that's not going to make an impact, and now our best player is an aging star. <laughs> right, right, right. And, you know, with uh, Levine, the one thing I hate for him, y'all, to do is go to a contender and we'd be Man. sitting there. <laughs> like, yeah. Right, like he, like, like he go to what? He go to the Clippers or the Lakers or – Hell, Memphis, somebody I'm, there. I'm just saying, you know, like right, and take and take less and take less of money than he would took in Chicago just to go win. Like that would really piss me off. <laughs> right, and, and that's that's what I'm kind of. That was my last point, fellas. Like I will, 
man, Jamar, you don't think, man, with that 200 mil, we offer Lazine 125 and then go get a big man for 75? I mean, tell him, like, if we want to win and go to the next level, you know, like, I, I, I think he's going to take that. No, nah, he's not. He's going to feel he disrespected and he then he's going to leave. <laughs> he's not. And that's the problem. Levine don't seem to have that personality. Like, he's a little big headed. And so, like, you know, if you tell him no, like, we, we can't, he's going to be like, what? What? I'm going to really explore free agency. And, and, and all honesty, I don't blame him. I mean, as much of work as he put in since he got in this league, he's extended each and every year, going from the yeah. losing situation uh, in Minnesota to to being the focal man in Chicago, and he has he has actually one of been one of the few that actually worked his butt off to get to where he's at. So get get yeah. your money. We yeah, we no, no argument. and the GM and stuff has to figure everything else out. Get your money. Pay the man. Get your money. Figure out the rest of this roster. One person I will trade would be Kobe White. Because that man confidence is shot. He's done. Go. This dude go. couldn't even like dribble the ball correctly in the playoffs. He he he's cooked. He couldn't even hit a shot. He's yeah, done. He didn't know Get if he wanted to shoot. He didn't know if he wanted to shoot or pass. He'll be in the air and want to shoot and then pass and, and travel. I'll be like, yep. oh my God. I yep. think a That's lot of his confidence, y'all, comes from the fact that Levine not passing him the ball when he's ready to receive it. From when I watched him at moments, he was cooking. But at moments he was like. Like what the hell like going on? With hair the fight? Like you know, but I think a lot of that maybe was chemistry with Levine, and Levine just kind of holding the ball a little too long, I, which is part of the conversation we're having right now with Levine. I I get that, but at the same time, it's like I I see a, a rookie from Morgan Park going out there and he's hooping no matter what. His confidence ain't shattered. He going out there and competing every night. So what's like effort? Like that's the thing I'm getting at. It's like effort. Like what are you doing? Like you can't play without confidence. That that point, you sh you blood in, in a water full of sharks. You done. I know, man. But I'm I, with me with Kobe White. It's hard to just let him go because I know what he can do. I know he can get high. I know he can be dangerous. I know this guy can be lethal. So and so for me, I'm like, man. I don't know if I want to let him go, y'all. I might want to keep him as a piece. I'm I'm ready to depart ways, man. It's, it's it's just inconsistency, and it's not like he can play defense. At least I know Io yeah. can play defense. At least I know yeah. Io can, yeah, can, he can actually him. impact yeah. the game. Uh -huh. Oh man, that was a tough one. Um, that was a tough one for me right there. I know what he can do with that one. He kind of reminds me a lot of uh, Patty Mills, and so like um, we'll see what happens. But you know that yeah. You know, Patty Mills play like. Say that again, Jamar. I mean, in I, I will hope he can play as half as good as Patty Mills can play. Man. <laughs> yeah, man, he can. He can. He has in the past. He has. And so, um, that's an interesting one. But I, 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 I hope we can keep him. Um, on the other hand, Zach Levine, he definitely ain't worth the money. But when you look at the overall, he's been here this whole time through a losing situation. He's kind of earned it. He's earned yeah. It. And, and, and he'll present that in the meeting room. And the Bulls will kind of be tied because then if they let him go and he go to another team, he mess around, win a championship or something, we just be sitting there like, ugh. And so, you know. Um, I mean, not unless they get, I don't know, not unless they get fair value for him. You know, I wouldn't be opposed to it. But like Jamar said, I mean, rightfully so, he, he's, ascend, he's been ascending every year. He's been in the league from, like, from Minnesota to Chicago. Um, he's just, he's not known as just a dunker anymore. So, yep. He's a weapon. I mean, he's an offensive yeah. weapon. Yeah. So, I mean, but that offensive that, weapon is allowed to play some damn playoff basketball for real. Yeah. I mean, and I'll that, be, I I'll be evaluating him off of playoff basketball too, not just against the, um, Detroit Pistons, but what you going to do against the Bucks? What you going to do against, mm -hmm. uh, the Heat? What you going to do against mm -hmm. those big teams? <laughs> When the game slows down and they really, really get into you. To, to, to be fair, I mean, that's a fair point. But to be fair, this was his first playoff experience. So let's see what happens next year. Yeah, yeah I mean, said, let's just run it back. We'll definitely see what happens next year. Um, and so, unfortunately, uh, though, the Bulls got to pay him this offseason. So, I mean, I guess <laughs> yeah. in that case, you, you got to pay him because if you don't, you won't know because he'll probably be somewhere else in another team. 
And so, um, yeah, the Bulls are tied definitely in a tough spot with that situation. On the other hand, fellas, let's get into some of these other series because we definitely talked Chicago this morning. Um, the Bulls and Bears, I took up an hour of our time, and I don't mind. And so on the other hand, though, uh, the Dallas Mavericks um, took care of the Utah Jazz. Okay, fellas, and although they put up a fight to Jazz yet again, they have come up short in playoff basketball. And so, Jamar, if you're the GM of this franchise, what next steps are you taking to make this team better? Man, like, I'm conflicted. Because it's like, I mean, obviously the writing's on the wall. Like, you do not run this back no more. It's 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 over. You don't do it. Like, I, I get they've been, you know, relevant, I guess, in their, you know, three or four-year window here. But they peaked last season being the number one team and getting put down in the second round. That That's when they peaked. So... You know, either either you're going to trade Gobert, which is probably more likely, or you're going to get rid of Mitchell, which I don't see that happening, especially with that being a small market team. And at the end of the day, you got to put butts in seats, and that's what he does. So, yeah, you, you can probably have to trade Gobert. You can probably have to revamp a lot of this roster. I know uh, <laughs> your buddy, Dominique McKinney, um, he he stated quite a few times to me that, you know, outside of Donovan Mitchell, I mean, the only other person that really get the own shot is Jordan Clarkson. And they're going to have to, like, change the philosophy how they play as well. Because you can't have Donovan Mitchell going out here shooting 35 shots and only hit 10 of them to score 28 points. <laughs> you just can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Let me ask you this, Jamar. Is Mike <clears throat> Colley's contract a bad contract? It feels like it, right? Because he was brought in to, you know, take pressure off of Mitchell, for him not, you know, always dominating the ball. Mike Conley is supposed to come in, you know, be a floor general, run the offense, play some defense, and it seemed like everything I just said, he did none of the above. Don't do it. At all. He he was a no-show in these playoffs. No-show. You know, Bogdanovich was, was, was streaky, and I think that was more so because – Lack of chemistry there, I, it just like, you know, at times he, he could be brilliant at times. He can just fluster. And I guess it goes back to your point about Kobe White and Levine, you know, when Donovan Mitchell has the ball all the time, it's like it's hard to get a rhythm, right? Yep. So I feel like that's what happened with Bogdanovich. You know, Royce O'Neal's in your starting lineup, but, you know, when you have games when he only scored two points, it's like you need more out of that from your starters. Right. Um, Rudy Gay for whatever reason, they didn't even see the court. And I feel like he could have been more contributed than Mike Conley and whoever else they had in that lineup at the time. Um, Hassan Whiteside, Hassan Whiteside. So we're just going to leave that as what it is. <laughs> so. Uh, I mean, washed up. <laughs> <laughs> like Miami got the best out of that man for those two years. And that was it. So that was it. He got paid and <laughs> you ain't heard from him since. Uh, he good now. He good, man. He good. <laughs> 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 so all in all you you're gonna have to blow this thing up you're gonna have to like like retool it and um danny ainge and uh Dwayne wade gonna have to have a long hard like i don't know 72 hour conversation with donovan mitchell going forward like because what he's doing is not working he's forcing it he's not trusting right. his teammates it's just it just looks bad and for I'm not trusting and, his teammates for sure and my last That's point when when that when they threw that alley oop to 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 go bear to win to actually win that playoff game, the, the fact that they celebrated as hard as they did that lets me know that they 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 not cool at all. They, they never really done that before, dude. That was like crazy between after that play happened and then at the end of the game, dude. They was like, you 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 must have thought it was two Patrick Beverleys out there. Yeah, <laughs> they they had that moment where like, but you could see they also know. People have been talking about them, y'all. Yeah, yeah. They know that. And so this was like that moment, like, yeah, you know, we we got the world and we can shut them up for the moment. But the thing is, we're not going to shut up. And if that's only a 2-2 series, and yeah. then you come back and you lose the next two, it's not relevant because you didn't win the series. Um, the Mavericks were without Luka, y'all. Yeah. And they still... Okay, don't get me wrong. Luca came back, y'all. But for three games in this series, this was without Luca, and 
the Mavericks still took care of them. And so that's an even worse look because they didn't even have their full team. So go ahead, Ann. Uh, it's time to blow it up in Utah. It's so what? Um, the one person I think uh, that deserves his credit for this series is Jalen Brunson. He showed up in a major way. He showed up in a major way, kept him in a Chicago series. Cat. Mm-hmm. Yep, and kept him in a series. And um, Luca came back and they handle business. I mean, Donovan Mitchell, when I see him play, he takes a lot of um, he takes a lot of ill-advised shots. Um, they don't have like Jamar said, they don't have no chemistry. Him and uh, Rudy Gobert. Pretty to to be honest, it seems like ever since um, ever since Rudy Gobert uh started like the COVID started, I don't think they've been cool since then. That's just my opinion from the outside looking in. That's a good point, bro. Facts. Mm-hmm. They haven't been cool. They haven't been cool since then. I don't. I don't know. Maybe he felt like he did it on purpose or something. Yeah, because none of us did get cool. But that's no, nothing no you thing. can really do on purpose. So I don't know. But it just seemed like ever since then they just been. That's just yeah. been that's just been a relationship. So, and it's pretty much affected the team. So, it's time to blow it up. Like Jamar said, they'll probably they'll probably trade uh they'll probably trade Gobert. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, they they could trade Donovan Mitchell, but I mean, Donovan Mitchell he has to his shot selection got to get better. Um, his three point shooting got to get better because he'll he'll take 10 threes. He'll be nine for 17. He'll have like 25 points. But he'll be two for seven from the three point. Like, that's come on, bro. Stop shooting so many threes. Like, you're not a three point shooter. You're not Steph Curry. You're not one of those guys, bro. And he's a good player. I'm not saying that he's not a good player. He's a he's a he's a damn good player, but shot selection just gotta get better. And like I said, Mike Conley, he was, I don't know what the hell he was at this series. Um Maybe he's aging. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it's just time to blow it up. I think they, like Jamar said, they had their peak. I think that's it. I think it's just, I think it's just that time. But yeah, like ever since, ever since he got COVID or COVID started happening, it's just been, they haven't been the same. I don't know. Maybe he felt like Rudy Gobert started COVID or something. I don't know. <laughs> Rudy got best. I mean, in a way, he did. <laughs> way, I don't, I don't way, know, but ever since he, then, it's just yeah. been, they've been at odds. I don't know what's going on, man. Yeah, man. In a way, he did. He, in a, in a way, kind of started this whole thing, Rudy Gobert. I remember that night, man, and him. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally remember that, man. And just sitting there like, really? What are you doing, man? What are you doing? And and the NBA shut down that night and everything just went. It ain't been the same since. It ain't been the same since. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. On the other hand, fellas, um, let's get into some other series. Um, but one thing I want to address, guys, is injuries. So, if you guys got news, uh, Joel Embiid, Okay. Uh, Joel Embiid, y'all, is out indefinitely for the playoffs. And I feel so bad for Philly, y'all, because, you know, we want to see this team be, you know, healthy and compete. You know, I want to see Joel Embiid kind of get to that conference finals. I don't know if it's ever, ever going to happen, man. He's just always hurt. You know, like, he's always hurt. And it's it's really sad to see. Um, fellas, where do Philly go from here, like, what what odds do you get him against the Heat in this series? Um, <laughs> you you want to go first, Jamar? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Hey, hey, so <laughs> they made a trade for a reason. <laughs> so the bearded yeah. one, <laughs> where you at, man? <laughs> right, it's a lot of pressure on the beard now. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's like you. you it's like, so the first four games when he got traded, it seemed like, you know, everything was just like, this is going to be like elite. And then, you know, he, he teetered off and, and boy, he, he, he <laughs> looked like a shell of himself. And dude, he just, he, he don't look like James Harden no more at all. So, but Hey, this is the reason why they brought him in. Right. 
to to be a compliment to 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 you know carry you at times. He ain't got to be the focal point, but now without Embiid for who knows how long, James Harden, time for you to show up, man. Your legacy's on the line. Like this is it. This is the last hurrah. We 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 said this for like the last between him getting moved, forcing his way to Brooklyn because he showed up overweight and forced his way to Brooklyn, and then trying to force his way again out of. Uh, Brooklyn to, to Philly, even though just looking at it, hindsight, he probably saw something that, you know, we didn't see at the time. But either way, look, you a former MVP, multiple scoring champion, you know, you was deemed as maybe one of the most unstoppable offensive players of all time. I don't know. I'm not I'm not the one saying that, but yeah, me neither. <laughs> regardless, it's like this dude has known for putting up 50 point triple doubles left and right. This dude is known for, you know, just, you know, creating the the new age step back which is not a travel but that's neither here nor there but either way <laughs> you have to get it done somehow some way it's like you just you're just gonna have to like show up now they if he shows up balls out and they lose in six or seven then it won't be as much backlash if if mb can't play but if you come out here you lay an egg if you play as as, as ben simmons is playing right now if basically if you just nobody out there and the heat just comes and just, you know, sweeps you or anything like that, it's over. All right, let's be careful, uh, Jamar. Ben ain't playing. Exactly. Ben is sitting. That's what I'm saying. Ben if is his sitting presence, and collecting. If, if his presence is like Ben Simmons right now, that's Look, that's Jamar, not- I can't play right now. I got mental issues from Philly last year, bro. I got mental issues, okay? I'm <laughs> scarred from Philly last year because I didn't take that open dunk. I'm scarred, man. So I got mental. Right? <laughs> I want you to give me my 200 plus million, though. I want that. So him and Kyrie Irving, they both saying, like, getting it. we want our money, goddamn it, all right? Bro. We want our money. Dude, Ben Simmons looks so terrible. This is worse than D'Angelo Russell in that, that snitching situation. This is beyond, like, everything right now. <laughs> like, he gets that. no respect, I think, across the whole league at all. Like, he's he's done. This is a this is a tough tough situation, man, for uh, Ben Simmons. And this week, y'all, he he got dogged out by uh, NBA analysts all over the world because um, he just he let his team down when it mattered. You know, it's like Ian being in the lunchroom, bro. Like it's like Jamar, you being on a basketball football team, and one of your guys get into a fight, and you just sit there and watch. Yeah, basically. Really, like. If, get your ass off the team, like, that's the case. Like, get off the team. Like, uh-uh, you ain't one of us. Like, for real. That's, a, that's, that's exactly what it's like. Ben, man, he he bogus. But go ahead, Ian. He bogus. Uh, I don't know. This And B, it's just, it's always, it's always something. Just yeah, no, always right. yeah. something. He just can't get oh, like, one <laughs> season with nothing. I mean, did, he messed up his thumb or something like like last week, right? Yeah, but he was playing through that. Yeah, he messed up his thumb or something. He's playing through that. So I'm like, damn, he messed up his thumb, but he playing with something like, all right, he playing through it. So now, I mean, you see the video of him getting a bow to the face, so it it seemed pretty hard. I mean, but. It's just he's just always in the mix with an injury, and it's just it's so unfortunate. Uh, James Harden, he it's time to put up or shut up. If he if he, if he is the man they say he is, it's time to go to work. We don't need twenty point eight rebounds, nine assists. No, we need the fifty points, triple double. James Harden, 45, 13 30, 30 to forty. Yeah, yeah, we need that. They need that every night. Uh, on another, on a bright note, uh, Tyrese Maxey, he's been balling. I don't know if it's because James Harden over there, he felt like he got to sh- out- outshine him or something, but Tyrese Maxey, he's been balling. He's been balling. So, um, mm-hmm. um, and another thing, why was Joel Embiid even in the game at that point? But that's that's another. That's another yeah, yeah, that's another option. Yeah. That's another conversation for another day. The game but, was uh, a blowout. It was over. Yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was over. The series was over. I don't understand why he was in the game, but still, I mean, still though, it's just always somewhere in B. It, it's I don't know. I don't know. It's just always something. It looks like he's probably gonna win MVP. I don't know, but that would suck if he don't show. If he don't 
play for the rest of the playoff, that would really suck. That would really suck. Um, yeah, um, and as far as the MVP, man, and I don't know, man, it's looking like it's going to be the Joker again. Yeah, he, he might he might go back, back to back. No argument said he might go back to back. Um, it just seemed like Miami always get the easy road. It's just, man, if he don't come back, it just seemed like they just always get the easy road. We're going to look up. They're going to be in the Eastern Conference Finals again. Well, congrats to that organization. They know how to stay healthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good culture. Man, for real. <laughs> you got a great culture there, a great coach that don't make Lack River mistakes um, in their exposure. And so that's what you have. That's what you have. On the other hand, speaking of the second round, fellas, we got some series, y'all. We got the Grizzlies and the Warriors. Okay. That starts tomorrow. Golden State is going down to Memphis. And Memphis has had a tough time uh, with Golden State. So, guys, in a few words, we need to make picks with these series. So, Jamar, Golden State, Memphis. Who you got, bro? I got Golden State in six. Okay. In? Golden State in five. John Moran has not been playing good this whole playoff. I'm so disappointed in Minnesota. Golden State in five. He's been playing in the fourth quarter. He's been playing in the fourth quarter against the Timberwolves. And the Timberwolves, the reason why they lost, we all know if we watch the series, Boy. Carl Anthony Towns ain't that dude. He is not that dude. Nah, I wouldn't like, say that. so damn inconsistent. It's ridiculous. It's most And I never got a chance to see it until now. Somebody was saying that, like, last week. Maybe Jamar made a post on it. But I began to see it really like, come on, man. Like, like foul trouble. He can't get no rebound. Go ahead, Jamar. Go ahead, John. No, go ahead, you. Uh, it's multiple things with Minnesota. They pissed me off so bad last night. Oh, my God. Uh, so, for instance, last night, they were up. They had a good defensive. They had a good defensive possession. They blocked uh, Memphis shot like two, two, three times, almost like four times. Yeah, Brandon Clark, the dude the beast, though. He'd be all over the boards, the little energizer. Uh -huh. Yeah. So he, so, he, so he blocked that shot. So then they come down. The crowd is going crazy. It's in the fourth quarter. The crowd's in the uproar. And the coach comes and calls a timeout and messes up the momentum. I'm like, why would you call a timeout and mess up the momentum? So then they come out the timeout. Call Anthony Towns shoots an ill-advised three. He bricks. Dumb three-pointer. I mean, a dumb yeah. three. Oh. Yeah. Then, uh, then Memphis goes down. They score. <laughs> Car Anthony Towns comes down again. He shoots an even farther three. Like, what are y'all right. doing? Bro, that was the three. Yeah. He shot it from the damn logo. I'm like, cat. Hey, what and look, he was doing? about 19 seconds on the shot clock. Right. I'm like, what are y'all doing? I'm like, and John Morant. And I like John Morant. Great player. But I think we kind of. We kind of jumping the gun on John Murray. He hasn't played good all series. He, they didn't. They, they shut him down at home. Yeah. He, I mean, he played. So the last game we hit the winning. Uh, we hit the winning yeah. layup. That was Anthony Edwards' fault. Why would you gamble? Why would you gamble in that? In that? Uh, in that possession, on the on try to take a steal. But you just could have kept him in front of you. You know what I'm saying? Make him right. take a jump shot. He's not a. He's not a great jump shoot. Uh, he took a. Terrible three last night. He almost didn't even hit the rim. He's not a great jump shooter. I will make him shoot. If I'm the Warriors, I will make him shoot. You're not going to the basket. You can shoot all game. I don't care. Yeah. Or he can get his. But the reason the reason they won that series was those other guys. They have shooter. The young, other guys. They, thank you. Yeah, the other guys won that series on Dang. top of Minnesota helping them. Minnesota yeah. helped them. Minnesota made so many ill-advised mistakes from coaching mistakes. Coaching. They could not contain Brandon Clark, Jamar, to save their lives. That man was all over them like Jamungi. That dude is, and for me, like me watching how Brandon Clark play is so irritating. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is, and, and it, he moves so slow, but for whatever reason, they just couldn't guard him. <laughs> I just don't get it. And Dominique was the one who who first pointed out Cat, and I and then, and then a couple of days later I doubled down on it. Like this man is so talented, but yet so garbage at the same time. You can tell he, I, yeah, he he's he's not that guy. And I feel like this series will go as far as Carl Anthony Towns go. 
because I know Anthony Edwards was going to do everything in his power to make it work. I mean, he had a couple of mistakes, but for the most part, he's the main reason why they was even relevant. Mm-hmm. And, and the funniest thing is, from the optics, the Timberwolves looked like the better team in the series. They did. They were. <laughs> they gave the series away. <laughs> they literally gave it away. You guys can win. What, three, they gave the series away. Three, they gave three, it away. Three games where they had double digit leads in the fourth quarter. <laughs> They, did, they gave the series yes. away. Just gave it to them. You know, like, fourth quarter, like, Memphis, like, I think they just knew game six, y'all. Like, they done did this three times already. Like, pretty much um, game one, they were up, y'all remember? Game four, they choked epically. Game five, they gave up the lead. And by the time game six hit, they like, yeah, this is a third double-digit lead. They going to choke it again. Minnesota only game, just, go ahead. The only go game ahead. they, the only game they beat them was only game Memphis truly beat them was game two. Yeah, All yeah, other that games. was basically and they beat the, end of the second the quarter game. to the to the rest of the game. That was right. it. Other than that, yeah, this should, the series should have been four. The series should have been four one. Yep, could have been easily four one four two. Minnesota, mm-hmm. like if, and, if they want to choke, if if the we, coach would have gave away the games, like it, it was really yeah. bad. And we would have been talking about – we would have been asking, how was the Grizzlies really overrated this year? We, we would have been talking all about that. Is Ja Morant really a top play? We would have been talking all about that. But instead right. – and, and the question is – I mean, I kind of still want to ask that damn question because either Minnesota was that good or Memphis is just lucked up because Golden I, State got hurt. I, for, for me, I think it's uh, more so – that was just matchup based because we know – matchups is all what it is in playoffs like who can you know really affect you the most and the way Minnesota plays they play the same tempo but also they took Steven Adams out out the game because he can't guard Carl Anthony Towns that's probably the best thing Carl Anthony Towns is they would just actually be on the floor so Steven Adams can play right um I believe I believe uh Memphis is actually uh is going to give Golden State some fits, but I think ultimately Golden State going to win. That's why I gave them a six because it seems like Memphis actually matches up well for the most part yeah. against the Warriors. Mm-hmm. But the X factor is is uh, Jordan Poole. So, right. yeah. Um, and and who did you you pick Golden State to how many five? Five. Yeah, I got five. Yeah, Memphis man. Um, no disrespect to Memphis. Um, but, you know, for them to have the fight they had against Minnesota, don't get me wrong, Minnesota, an uh, up-and-coming team. But, you know, it was a lot of things Minnesota did better than them in this series other than the fourth quarter, and that is a big alarm. And so um, I'm definitely going with Golden State. I'm going to go with Golden State in six. But I think it will be a fight a little bit. Um, on the other hand, fellas, um, we got another Western Conference series. Uh, Phoenix, they played – a New Orleans team, y'all, that kind of raised some eyebrows for real. Uh, This New Orleans team is scrappy, y'all. They are talented. And I'm here to tell y'all, folks better stop sleeping on Brandon Ingram. The dude is a hooper. And this was his coming out party, Jamar. He kind of reminded me of like a, a, a baby KD almost. Like, the dude get his spots and he can go off on 40 with you. Period. Uh-huh. And so, New Orleans. Um, it was uh, stated this week, y'all, that uh, Zion Williamson, he is more than ready to sign that contract. And so um, we was talking about this yesterday. I think somebody stated that uh, Zion needs to uh, hire a chef um, and so he can keep his weight intact and different things in his body. Oh, um, yeah, he somebody called him Fat Man, et cetera. Um, that <laughs> so with Fat Man uh, in, like, this team, I think, got a bright future, y'all. Was y'all impressed by New Orleans? Uh, I wouldn't say impressed. I mean, they have they have the talent. Like it's there. Brandon Ingram, you know, he he can he can get a bucket. I mean, you kind of expected think, this. Yeah, I think he I think he showed us that last year when he left the Lakers. He he can get a bucket. You know, that's why he got the big contract. So um, he can go. I mean, he can get a bucket from anywhere on the court. Um, 
you know, CJ McCullum, same thing. He can get a buddy. He got playoff experience. Uh, they have a very underrated coach in Willie Green. Very underrated coach in Willie Green. Um, this is his first yeah. run, and I think it's going to be one of many. Yeah. So uh, they got a couple of pieces over there. You know, the um, I forget the guy's name with the long hair, the point guard, number 15. Oh, uh, Jose Alvarado. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, uh, yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. He was ticking <laughs> off Chris Paul. But he yeah, is a little it. mini mouse. That dude yeah. gonna be a problem. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You need guys like that on your team. So I mean, they got pieces, and you put you put Zion with. They got Valanciunas. You know, he don't he don't get off the he don't jump off the ground, but he will get you a couple buckets and you know get you a couple rebounds. So um, you add that with Zion. Um, uh. 30 to 40 pound lighter Zion because if he stay at the weight that he had now, he, his NBA career not going to be long. He's a great right, talent. He's going to get hurt again. Yeah, he's going to bust out some more shoes. That, that That's not healthy, bro. So, um, I mean, it sucks he in New Orleans with all the good food and uh, I, can't, I can't blame him for not putting, for, for, for not passing the plate. <laughs> but uh, Humble, he man. got, he got, <laughs> he got a couple hundred million he tried to secure. So, I mean, they get him back and they get him healthy and him playing like he was his, his rookie year when he played is man they'll they have some special man they really have some special to be honest if they had him this year and he uh and he was healthy they could have possibly and Devin Booker got hurt they could have possibly knocked the Suns out could have been out. possible they would have knocked him out because yeah. it was the series was that close it was another yeah. close close series as close as the Timberwolves and the that series was very close to him. And yeah, so, took, I mean, it came down to the wire every game. It took Chris Paul to go 14 or 14 for them to win the last game. That's, That's crazy. They were that was, happy. That was amazing on his part. Right. They were happy, fellas. They were happy when that clock rang zero. You could see the relief like, we escaped. Mm-hmm. We escaped this joint because this was close. And, 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 and shout out to Willie Green, man, who cried on the floor, y'all. Um, he cried to his big brother, uh, Money Williams. Um, and he was, he, he, he drew up some great plays. I mean, that guy can coach. And yeah. one important thing I just want to state before you go, Jamar, is shout out to Stephen A. Smith for putting out there the camaraderie between those two brothers and showing the series and highlighting the stating that this is what brothers can do if you give them more opportunities. Yeah, he was talking sure. clearly to the owners and to those people in the higher seats, saying, hey, if you give them opportunities, you see what they can do. Go ahead, Jamar, bro. Thanks. Um, no, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it brief. People have to realize that this is not the same Pelicans team <laughs> when – you know, before the trade deadline or what the records show. Once they added C.J. McCollum, it unlocked Brandon Ingram. He has more yep. spacing now. Mm-hmm. So that's that's why that that pre-draft comparison to Kevin Durant started to show in, yeah. in that series. So, so yeah, they, they definitely impressed me. Um, you know, they, they have a lot of, you know, uh, young guys that play hard, a lot of you know, guys that just buy into the system. Um, Zion, I just, I mean, I don't want to see him turn into Greg Oden in that regard. Yeah, me neither. That'd be, uh, that'd be um, but yeah, if he can just come back and give me 60 games next year, you can just give me 60 and get to a playoffs and actually be healthy in, in postseason time. I'm, I'm happy with that because yeah. the potential is there. The potential is there. And the viral video dunks are there. And so we definitely hope to see you, Zion, because we see you Man, dunking. In that that pisses me off. <laughs> this dude win the dunk contest and pregame warm ups, but can't play on the court. Like, come on. It's, it's tough. So, fellas, let's stay focused there. Let's stick to the task. Um, we got Phoenix uh, going up against a worthy opponent, the Dallas Mavericks. And so, uh, just curious, fellas, who you got for this series? Jamar, who you got? Because, by the way, I'm with y'all. I stated I got Golden State. But who do you got for this one, uh, Phoenix or Dallas? I got I got Suns and seven. Hey, man, 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I might have to agree with Jamar. I mean, that's depending on Devin Booker. Um, yeah, I got the signs at six or seven. Man, it's interesting, man, because I prior to the season and even at moments of the season, I've been looking at Phoenix and Golden State all year, y'all. Phoenix and Golden State. But Dallas is like this damn intruder for some reason. Man. And they are playing so well. Um, yeah. The health, it, it really depends on the health of Devin Booker. But I tell y'all what, if Devin Booker is out for a moment, Dallas will take this series. They are that right. with Spencer Dinwiddie. <laughs> with Spencer yeah. Dinwiddie. Coming off the bench. Yep. Quality, the Bulls had and let go for some damn reason. Um, but yes, Spencer Dinwiddie, since he's come, Jamar seems like Dallas has been a different team since he's come to that team. The crazy like, thing is, he ain't played well in the last couple of games, and yet they're rolling. They are rolling. Yeah. And I'm just talking for the reg- the rest of the regular season when he came in. Like yep. they turned That's into right. a really, really good team. They are yeah. a dangerous opponent for Phoenix for real. Um, but I'm gonna go with the Suns, just depending upon the health of Devin Booker. Um, and because I know that Phoenix is very, very tough to beat in, in that Arizona desert. Um, and so I'm gonna go with the Suns in seven. And that's with Devin Booker, y'all. That's with Booker. And if it's not with if, if Book ain't in there, then Dallas is right there waiting to feast and mess around and go to the finals on folks. On the other yeah. hand, um, Let's go to the Eastern Conference because that that Phoenix and uh, Dallas series is that close. Um, we talked about the Heat, y'all. Um, and so the Heat are playing the Sixers. And so, Jamar, um, who do you got in that series? How many, you know? How many um, I'm going... I'm going Heat and Six. I got heat and five. What about you, Ian? Mm, depends on when Joel come back. He's not coming back. He out indefinitely. But he, you know, he might just show up with a mask one of those games. Yeah, he could. Depend on how long then that thing. Depend on how long the series is. If James Harden play like they play. I, I think I would say heat and five. Yeah. Um. Let's Google that, guys. Possibly. Um, possibly heat in a sweep. Yeah, man, because uh, they say he is out indefinitely. And in regards to how long he will be out, um, they say it's concussion, y'all. Um, there's no timetable for his return. Um, and that's where they are. And so they said for around three weeks, y'all. Uh no, that was the end of the season he was out for three weeks. They say he'll be re- reevaluated next week and that he right. will... So, I mean, he could possibly come back. Yeah, and that he'll require surgery. Mm. So, yeah. Um, so, I got to go with the heat, y'all. Um, but, Jamar, you raised a good point about James Harden. On the other hand, another really good series, y'all. The Celtics... Um, <laughs> they they look like they finna be in a dog fight. Um and so um this could be a very good series as well, y'all. The Boston Celtics, they are going up against a worthy opponent in the Milwaukee Bucks. And so just curious, Jamar, who you got for this series? Bucks and six. Okay. Woo! Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, in. Bucks is six, so I was. I'm Boston. I let Giannis get his. I got to stop everybody else. Right. Boston, Boston is seven. Boston is seven. Mm, I like that one. I really like that one. Um, for me, y'all, I'm gonna go with the Milwaukee Bucks, and I'm gonna go with the Bucks. In seven. It's that close. It's that close. So I got the Bucks in seven. You got the Celtics in seven, and Jamar yep. got the Bucks in six. So yes, that's where we are. Um, and so, fellas, Ooh. that concludes our sports analysis for this morning. Um, 
we thank you all for uh, chopping it up with us this morning. Uh, shout out to the Chicago White Sox and Cubs, who both had terrible weeks this season. Uh, well, this week. And uh, we cover them from week to week. Um, and right now, unfortunately, like the Cubs might be a better team uh, than the White Sox right now. And they have a better record, guys. And so uh, it's early, though. And uh, they are both near 500, at least. So um, maybe things will progress as the season goes along. And so with that being said, fellas, uh, Jamar, any final thoughts or shout outs as we head into the weekend, bro? Hey, man. Um, you know, shout out to all the players that are, you know, getting drafted this weekend. Um, you know, life changing moments for, for your family is always like I, I always love watching the draft just to, you know, see it happen. Uh, the camaraderie, the, the the just the whole positive energy there. So I guess for you guys, just make the most of it once you, you know, sign the contract and get to the league. So shout out to all the new uh, guys this year in this class. Yep. And yourself, bro? Uh, no, not too much. Uh, just to piggyback on what Jamar said, it's pretty dope to see those guys, you know, had those life-changing moments, man. And hopefully they uh, take advantage of it. Take advantage of it. All right. Uh, shout out to the Chicago Bulls on a great season. Um, you know, we uh, definitely love you guys and hope that you guys come back um, with a revamp uh, roster next season. Um, on the other hand, I re piggyback, um, you know, with the draft. Shout out to those guys. I hope you guys have great careers. And then on the other hand, uh, shout out to the Chicago Cubs who had a great week. And so Chris Ford is happy. On the other hand, the Chicago White Sox, who's had a terrible week. And so um, hopefully things progress and get better with them, because if not, we will talk about Tony La Russa every week. So with that being said, thank you guys <laughs> <laughs> for tuning in with us this morning on the Early Minutes Plus Talk podcast. <laughs> you see our brother Jamar White Sox head here. And so we're definitely rocking with the White Sox, but... If Tony LaRue ain't managing the right way, goddammit, please. And so we hope that he does the right things, but it's early, right, Jamar? And so we got time, um, and hopefully things just get better as they get their chemistry better as a team. And so with that being said, everybody, thank you all for tuning in. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Please hit that like button, guys. And share. Or, like, yes, share, subscribe. Share it. Find us on YouTube on Spotify, or any place where you can find your podcast. You can find us on Facebook at the Early Morning Sports Talk Podcast via search, and we are there, and we would love to chop it up with you guys and just be a part of a community. We thank you all for your love. We thank you all for your support, and may you all have a great weekend. Peace. Peace. Deuces.